All right, hey everyone and welcome. So if you're prepping for the UPSC, you already know just how important agriculture is for India, but are you paying enough attention to, uh, well, what's happening underwater? You're talking about fisheries. Right, exactly. It might not be the first thing that comes to mind, but trust me, it's a topic that often pops up in those mains exams, and for good reason. I mean, India is a global powerhouse when it comes to fish production. Yeah, we're talking the third largest overall. And when you look specifically at aquaculture, we're second in the world. And it's not just about the numbers. This is about the lives of millions of people. Over 25 million, to be precise. Yeah. Uh, their livelihoods depend on this sector, especially in coastal areas. It's tied to the economy, food security, you name it. Yeah. But today, we're not here to just memorize stats. We're going to use this article. We've got to actually understand the trends, the challenges. The stuff that really matters, especially for those UPSC questions. Uh, right. Okay, so big picture. Fisheries are important. We get it. Mm. But how do we connect the science, the research, all that, with the actual millions of fish farmers out there doing the work? That's where fisheries extension services come in. Ah, okay. Tell me more about those. Well, think of them as the bridge. They connect that cutting edge research with what's actually happening on the ground. They provide training, guidance, and support to fish farmers, helping them embrace new technologies and best practices, which is so crucial, especially when you consider the impact of climate change. And overfishing. We can't forget that right. one. Right. Overfishing, it all comes back to sustainability, really. And that's something we see pop up again and again in the UPSC exams. It's all about finding that balance, right? Making sure we're using resources responsibly so they're there for future generations. Absolutely. Now, speaking of taking action, this article highlights some pretty cool government initiatives aimed at tackling these challenges. Matsya Seva Kendras, or MSKs, for example. You've also got Sagar Mitras and even a project supported by the World Bank. So it's clear there's some serious commitment to this sector. No kidding. Yeah. So what can you tell me about these MSKs? What are they all about? Well, they're kind of like one-stop shops for fisheries support. Like comprehensive hubs. Yeah, exactly. They offer all sorts of services, disease testing, water analysis, you name it. They've even got training programs and support for startups. It's really quite impressive. And the article even gives us some examples, like in Frisur, Kerala. Oh, right. I remember reading about that. They've got this MSK there with really advanced testing facilities. They can even do DNA analysis to help farmers choose the best fish breeds. Wow. Then you have places like Nasik and Sangli in Maharashtra, where the focus is on training and incorporating new technologies to boost production. Okay, so different regions, different approaches based on their specific needs. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And what about those Sagar Mitras? The article made it sound like they're more on the ground working directly with coastal fishers. Yeah, exactly. They're like that crucial link between the folks making the policies and the communities actually out there fishing. Imagine getting real-time information on weather, on fishing zones, even market prices, all thanks to your Sagar Mitra. That's pretty empowering, right? It is, and it goes beyond just information. They educate fishers on things like safety regulations, proper handling techniques, even things like disaster preparedness. So they're not just providing information, they're actually equipping these fishers with the knowledge and tools they need to thrive even in a really challenging environment. And one that's constantly changing, right? With all these new challenges emerging. Right. So we've got these great initiatives, these programs, all aimed at supporting fish farmers, but there's this big hurdle we have to talk about. And that's, well, the digital divide. Ah, yes, a big one. It's a problem in so many rural areas, especially those that depend heavily on fishing. Limited internet access, even just the basic digital literacy to use online resources, it's a real challenge. You're absolutely right. It's like, you know, there's all this knowledge out there but if you don't have the key to unlock it, it doesn't really help. Right? Yeah. But here's the good news. The article actually offers a potential solution, and it's called Aqua Bazaar. Okay, I've heard of this. It's basically like a virtual university, but it's designed specifically for fisheries. I mean, talk about a game changer. All right. So what makes it so special? Well, it's got all this expert guidance on pretty much any topic you can think of related to fish farming. Breeding seed production, you name it. And it goes beyond just texts and articles, right? Yeah, they've got practical demonstrations. You can actually watch and learn. Like having a personal tutor right there on your phone or a computer. I was just thinking that. Imagine like a fisher in a remote village. Yeah. Suddenly they have access to the same level of expertise as someone you know in a big city. Exactly. It's about leveling the playing field. And for our listeners out there who are on the UPSC journey, this is a perfect example of how technology can be used 
to empower communities, to bridge those knowledge gaps. It's powerful stuff. But of course, we can't ignore the challenges that remain. The article brings up some important ones, like fragmentation, for example. Fragmentation. Yeah, the fact that all these initiatives, these programs, they're not always working together as well as they could be. Uh, and it's like you've got all these great ideas, but <laughs> if they're operating in silos, it's not going to be as effective. Right. <laughs> it's a good point. It's like, imagine an orchestra, right? If all the instruments are playing different tunes, it's not going to sound very good. Exactly. Yeah. And then, of course, there's climate change. Always looming. It's impacting everything. Unpredictable weather, rising sea levels, changes in water temperature. It all directly affects those who rely on fishing. It's a big challenge. But the article does offer some potential solutions. One interesting idea is institutional convergence. Okay, what's that? Well, it's basically about bringing fisheries services under those existing agricultural networks. Like imagine tapping into the network of Krishi Vidyan Kendras or KVKs. Oh, yeah. They're doing great work in the agriculture sector. Exactly. They've got the infrastructure, the expertise. If we could leverage that for fisheries as well, it could have a huge impact. So instead of starting from scratch, we're building on something that's already there. Mm. I like that. And of course, technology. We got to keep talking about that. Right. Platforms like Aqua Bazaar. Yeah. Making sure they're accessible even in the most remote areas. That's crucial. Bridging that digital divide. It's absolutely essential if we want these initiatives to be truly effective. And here's another key point. The role of the private sector. The article talks about public-private partnerships. Yeah, that's important. Bringing in more expertise, resources, it could really make a difference. Okay, so we covered a lot here. Trends, challenges, all sorts of exciting stuff. A lot to think about. Right. But for those of you listening who are on that UPSC path, what does this all mean? What are the big takeaways? Well, for one, it highlights the importance of sustainable development and economic growth. Two huge themes in the UPSC syllabus. And these aren't just buzzwords, are they? No, no, not at all. These are real interconnected concepts that are shaping India's future. And this isn't about rote memorization. It's about understanding how these issues actually play out, how they affect real people's lives, and how we can find solutions. This is this big puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. we got to look at the whole picture. And that's what the UPSC is all about, isn't it? Thinking critically analyzing complex challenges. Absolutely. So the article ends with this really thought-provoking question, and it's asking, how can India ensure its fisheries sector not only thrives, but actually becomes like a, like a global model for sustainable practices, I mean? It's a big question. It is. And it really challenges us to think beyond, you know, just increasing production. It's about finding a way to do it right, you know? protecting the environment, thinking about the future, the well-being of the people who depend on this industry. It's about long-term vision. Yeah, it's like understanding that the choices we make now, they have an impact down the line. And that brings me to you, our listeners, because especially for those of you prepping for the UPSC, you're the ones who are going to be grappling with these questions. You're the future policymakers, the leaders. So let me flip that question back to you. How do we balance economic growth with ecological sustainability? How do we use technology to empower those fish farmers while also making sure we're closing that digital divide? Yeah. These are the things that are going to define, well, I mean, they're going to define this century. And that's what makes these deep dives so relevant for anyone taking the UPSC exam. It's not about memorizing facts. It's about building those critical thinking skills, right? Getting that deeper understanding you need to really tackle these real world problems. Because at the end of the day, that's what the UPSC is all about. Yeah. It's about testing your ability to think, analyze, and come up with solutions. All right, so there you have it, folks. We took a pretty deep dive today into India's fisheries sector. From those traditional ponds to the, uh, the high tech stuff. The digital platforms. Yeah. All those exciting changes. And we hope you found it informative, maybe even inspiring. Absolutely. Because knowledge is power, right? Especially yeah. when we're talking about tackling these big challenges. I couldn't agree more. So if you enjoyed this deep dive, and hey, if it got you thinking about some of the stuff that might come up on your UPSC exams, well, then do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. And hey, why not share this episode with your fellow aspirants? We've got plenty more deep dives coming your way, so stay tuned. Until next time, happy learning, everyone.